Hi, I wanted to talk about uh, something today that something I've been having really uh, thinking about many, many times over for the past uh, 20 years. Um, that started uh, 1995 when I studied the Bible uh, in New York City. Uh, even though I'm French, I lived in the United States for just a little bit over 20 years. That's why I speak English. Uh, but I am originally from France. And uh, I've been very, very affected to an extreme shunning, as I like to call it, from my brother. Uh, because he never told me when my mother passed away. To this day, he has not told me. I know it now, but he has never told me that my mother passed away. Uh, he has prevented uh, my aunt to speak to me. Uh, last time I spoke to my aunt was uh, the, the 1st of January of 2010. So that's six years ago. Um, and even though all Jehovah's Witnesses are indoctrined uh, with this uh, very, very strong uh, brainwashing religion, they still have, I would think, I would say, two type of witnesses, whether they're in or out, two types of witnesses. The one that are very square, where nothing that is not the shape of this can come in or out, and the one that are a little bit more flexible. My brother is one of those square ones, my mother and myself, uh, for example, uh, more of the flexible ones. That's what I'm out, actually. And my mother started getting sick late 2006. So, you know, I don't know what she would have done over the years if she had not been sick. She may still be a witness, but even when she was, I know that she was not the type of uh, not a flexible thinking. There was things she didn't like in the congregation, in the organization, and we would talk about often. But it's interesting because one day she told me that she knew that my brother was one of the square ones. So interestingly, because there are those two kinds of witnesses, the one like my brother are I mean, extremely above and beyond stubborn to the point that he went above and beyond not letting me know ever that our mother, and we have only one, died. When an elder, was still an elder, in the old congregation of my brother, you know, accepted to talk to me on the phone just a few days ago. And he's the one who told, told me that my mother was incinerated and where she was. The thing is, my mother would have never, never want uh, to be incinerated. It's not, she grew up as a Catholic and even though she had no, nothing, nothing left over from the Catholic congregation, first of all, she was never really practicing the religion, but still something she grew up with the, you know, the belief that we don't cremate people, and she didn't want that. But that's what happened after she died. Because, of course, I had no say. I wasn't there. I didn't know. I mean, there was no way of me stopping that in any way, shape, or form. Another thing that I know is that I grew up hearing my mother say that she would deny God for her kids any time of the day. So another thing that I know about my mother is that even though she was a Jehovah's Witness, but if she had two little children and one of them needed blood one day, she would have said, go ahead. So you see, there are, there are two type of witnesses. Now, another interesting story about being two type of witnesses, the one that do more, you know, kind of, take the, not the, you know, the road just this way, but kind of go, you know, where it fits them better, is this, the sister I studied with. So here's the story, very interesting. I studied with a sister, very, um, you know, a faithful, very active sister. She had a son that was disfellowshipped, and that son lived in a home. 
So you would think that knowing how witnesses think about disfellowship people and having a son that is disfellowshipped and a new, brand new uh, Bible student, she would have come to my home to study the Bible. But guess what? She asked me, because she was a little bit older and a little bit heavy, couldn't walk very easily, blah, blah, blah. She asked me to go to her house. So I did my whole Bible study for a good part of that 1995 year at her home. Someday I would come in, the sun would be here, or sometimes he wouldn't. But what disturbed me is that she had told me over and over how mean her son was and that once in a while he threatened her to kill her. So that's the how I studied the Bible with a sister that she could have come to my home but had me come to hers with a very nasty, apparently, son that was this fellowship. So the fact that he was disfellowshipped and her son was in a home, this is not the problem. The problem was that she was, in this case, breaking the laws of Jehovah's Witnesses, plus with someone that was, you know, still threatening her of death. So that's how I studied the Bible. Another thing that she was doing with me and found out she was not doing with everyone else two years or three years later, is that you know how when you study the Bible, if you've been a witness and you study the Bible, the person who studies with you, if you are single, you know, if you're by yourself like I was, they'll sit next to you so you won't sit by yourself. She never did that. She never sat next to me because she was used to sit on the right side of the kingdom hall with her unbaptized husband, and there were only two seats. So she was sitting there with her husband, letting me sit by myself. I remember I would sit always by the fourth or fifth row from the front by myself the whole time that I studied the Bible. But what's interesting is that when, when I, I left from New York to North Carolina, and one day I came back you know, visit, and I visited my old congregation, because actually it was the best congregation I ever had, so, you know, I was glad to come visit uh, that congregation any time I came back to New York. And what do I see? She had a new Bible study by then. She had a lot of Bible studies, so she always, pretty much always had one. And what do I see? She's sitting right in the middle, like I used to sit by myself, near her Bible study. I thought that really pretty sucked. But anyway, so that's um, some of the bitterness here and there that I have many others, but uh, that I have about Jehovah's Witnesses. You know, they have to make up their mind if they are still in the organization. And if they decide that that shunning thing is serious, why do you even keep your son that is threatening you in your home? It's okay. If he kills you and you want to, yeah, keep, it in, keep him in your home, it's fine. But why do you bring a Bible student in that home? And on the other hand, if one witness can do that, why the other one cannot even tell his sister that his own mother or an his and her own mother died. So you see, that's another problem with Jehovah's Witnesses. They are the square one and the flexible one. But if you know that you can be flexible in that case, a little bit more flexible, why are you such an ass? And be so square that you can't even tell your own sister that your mom died. So anyway, a little bit of rant that I wanted to do here. That was needed a long, long time ago. I had this story. Uh, I wanted to tell this story about that sister and the fellowship son. I uh, mean, and that's how I, I studied the Bible. So anyway, uh, 
If you are one of Jehovah's Witnesses, I hope you learn from this story. And if you are an ex-KW, let me know what you think about it. Bye-bye.